you know, staying on top of the ladder is bloody hard work. You know, staying that top four is hard work. Um, you know, when it doesn't matter what era you've played in, the fact is you get two chances to play and you, you've had your chance, now it's the time to make a grand final. Once you make a grand final, I think the plenty finals are the hardest game ever. Once you made a grand final, at least you can either, you know, win, lose or draw it. You've had your chance, but not making it is worse. This is Legends with Bevo. Thanks to Anytime Fitness Glenelg, Renalake Electrical Services, Tiger Tennis and SMS Gas Installations. And now, here's your host, Bevo. Well, five-time Premiership superstar, Brownlow medalist. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here, contestant in 2020. And as well, a Bet Odyssey ambassador. The man's done it all. Dipper, great to have you on Legends with Bevo. What a pleasure. Well, what do I say? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bevo. Uh, nice to be on the show. And uh, thank you for reminding me how good I was. <laughs> you still are, mate. Let's be honest. Oh, oh, I am. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. You're <laughs> You're a superstar. Everyone loves you around Australia. And um, thank you. We'll get to your experience on I'm a Celebrity in a moment. But we have two huge prelims this weekend. You're a man that knows a lot about prelim finals. On Friday night, yeah. we've got the Cats taking on the D's. And of course, uh, My Mighty Power taking on the Dogs on Saturday night. Let's start with the Friday night game, mate. Who's your tip and why? Oh, geez. I think, uh, I think Melbourne have, have really matured this year. I think they are really. Uh, understand exactly where they're at the moment and there's a lot of support for Melbourne to do well and you know Geelong's a lot of pressure of them obviously being another final and lost last year's grand final and look at the end of the day I'm going for Melbourne I think Melbourne are, uh, um, are really uh, at, at the right at the right peak right now you know got some really terrific plays back forward and in the middle you know obviously with, uh, with Petrarca going you know Petrarca reminds me a little bit about myself the way he he goes about it and you know, just the way he's just got a lot of energy. And uh, there's a, there was a moment in the game last week when it was quite tight when Petrarca was stuck on the boundary line. Most people would have gone, you know, out of, the, uh, out of bounds or whatever. He just stood his, stood his ground and, and just sort of fought off two or three players. He got the handball out and they got a goal out of it. So uh, I'm thinking um, uh, Melbourne for that one. And on Saturday night? As I mentioned, it's the power hosting the dogs. Obviously, the dogs a bit banged yeah. up, and the power cherry ripe after a week off. Never, 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 never disclude a uh, a team that is hurt. You know, we all, we all know about that. You know, like it's a, it's like an animal. An animal will come up and get you when when you think it's hurt. You know, when yeah, they're a very good side. They're, they're a side that will never give up. And poor power have been just terrific this year, haven't they? They sure. You know, have. Ollie. Ollie Wines, who I've known since about 14 years of age, he's just really had a terrific season. You know, they've been winning the games without Charlie Dixon really dominating and, you know, we, uh, we know how good he is. And, you know, Port Adelaide, you know, are ready to, you know, to make a stance. And I think, a, I think it's a bit hard for the Bulldogs to fly into Adelaide, go to Perth and fly back out and then go back out again. So... I'm going for uh, Port Adelaide there. I think they're uh, ready to make a move. Good man. No, I, I agree with you, mate. Um, absolute credit to the Bulldogs for for winning on on Saturday night, considering they've been like the Leyland brothers travelling all around Australia. But I, I feel as I think Port's cherry ripe. Yeah, but how good? Year. I mean, how good, Bevo? The last couple of years, the way these players have been able to go in these hubs. Now, the thing about the hub is the fact that you know, when you're a young fella, you haven't got any any family or whatever. I mean, not family, but married or so. Um, it's sort of like a, it's like a bit of a, you know, a footy trip. You know, you live in hotels and bits and pieces. But the older guys are finding it hard away from their families and, and what they've been able to, uh, you know, sustain, you know, keep playing football and that. So, you know, it's really, really hard being these hubs. And congratulations to the AFL and all the teams and all the clubs to make sure that this game keeps going because, we love our footy. It's just kept the same, of course, in the last couple of years with this terrible COVID and what's been happening uh, between the borders. But, you know, I just put my hand up to these players and go, you know, well done, well done. You know, when you know, grand finals are grand final. Some say, oh, this is not a real grand final or whatever. But I tell you, I think it'd be tougher to to, to play the way they're playing and, and, you know, play in all different states and all different conditions, as they do anyway. But, but being away from home has really, uh, you know, affected a lot of the players. Absolutely well said, mate. I think the AFL deserve credit, the players, everyone that's been involved to to keep the season going 
two years in a row now. And <laughs> and you're right, it doesn't matter if it's in Perth, in Tassie, in, in Brisbane, regardless, in Melbourne where the grand no, final well, is. No, no, flags no, no, are flags. No, so, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. It does, it does matter. I know you're an Adelaide boy. <laughs> I, mean, the, I mean, the MCG is just bare. It's just terrible. Yeah. I mean... You know, I live near the MCG. I love the MCG. I was born on the MCG. I've played on the MCG. I've parachuted into the MCG. <laughs> I've hot air ballooned in the MCG. I've helicoptered in the MCG. I've played many grand finals in the MCG. But it's empty. And that's something that we want to make sure we get back to it. You know, congratulations yes. to Perth. Congratulations last year up in Brisbane. But if they're the only places that we can go uh, and play our game, at least our game is still being played. Yeah, well said, Dips. And uh, yeah, even as an Adelaide boy, and I think a lot of people, everyone knows that MCG is the home of footy and and we love seeing a packed house over 100,000 at the G and even the players want to play at the MCG as well. So let's hope next year things are back to normal again. And so I'm, I'm tipping, I guess you'll go for go for the Ds for this year's premiership then or do you think Port you know, can beat, beat I Melbourne? Think, if they, no, I think yeah. Port. I think Port and Melbourne have, have been the real two mature teams this year. Melbourne's got a lot of pressure on them. I mean, the pressure is, and, and so is Port, because, you know, uh, everyone's expected Port to win a, a final over the last two or three years. And, and Melbourne's been that team that's saying, you know, oh, you guys are really mature now, the way you go. And they've just fallen short of it. But this year, you know, staying on top of the ladder is bloody hard work. You know, staying that top four is hard work. Um, you know, when it doesn't matter what era you've played in, the fact is you get two chances to play. And you've had your chance, now it's the time to make a grand final. Once you make a grand final, I think the preliminary finals are the hardest game ever. Once you make a grand final, at least you can either, you know, win, lose or draw it. Uh, and you've had your chance, but not making it is worse, you know. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right there. Last year, the heartbreak that Port suffered by losing by goals to the Tigers, I think it's going to push them even further this year to go to go, obviously, to make the grand final. And then I think they're good enough to win it. Anyway, moving on to, to modern footy versus, you know, the, the great era that you used to play in, Dipper. How do you find modern footy watching it these days? Because you speak to a lot of legends and they find it a bit hard to watch with the number of players around the footy and, and not as high scoring. But what's your thoughts on it? Uh, Bev, I've been involved with AFL football now for nearly 40 oh God, I can't believe how, how long. But, you know, I've been in game development a long, long time. I've... Um, uh, you know, I've done ice kick for the last uh, 16 years, you know, as an ambassador trying to get the game going. And now we've got girls team, which is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I've travelled this great country. I, I, I reckon I've been to about 5,000 different footy clubs, you know, promoting the great game. And I helped GWS uh, with Sheeds. You know, we were two years before GWS started, you know, promoting what football is, uh, AFL is all about in Sydney in Canberra, and now look at them, you know, they play in the grand final, they've got over 35,000 members. You know, time changes and, and we've got to move with it. Now, back in the 80s, I mean, love playing that time. I mean, who, who was to know? I started in 1975 as a young boy and, you know, I played through the 70s, the 80s and the 90s. So, you know, I've had a great opportunity and then work on the boundary, obviously, for 10 years, whatever, get to know all the players and then been involved in game development. So, I'm up to date with all the players. I know, you know where they are and who they are and who their parents are and, you know, and it's just been great. But the game has moved on. There's no doubt about it. These players have to move with the game every year. It's just not one rule. It's two or three rules. How, how I could play standing on the mark without doing anything, I doubt if I could do that, right? <laughs> if it's talk about the 80s, I mean, the 80s were good, hard football. It was suburban football. You know, you know, even in Adelaide, like in South Australia, you know, Gunnell versus Sturt or, you know, Norwood versus uh, the Bulldogs. You know what I mean? It's, it was just hard, great suburban football. And, um, you know, you, know played on a, you played on a Saturday and that was it. You know, and, but, but today's football, these players, they're, they're athletes. Uh, school level has to be pretty good. They train 24-7, so, you know, it's a, it's a great game to watch. I think it's come back a little bit, you know, a, lo a lot more high marking, a, a lot more, you know, long kicks and, you know, not sort of um, just created, you know, uh, backline floods and things like that. But the game's evolving all the time. And let's go back to the, the 80s and 90s and 
Hello, there back, you are. Back in, are you? <laughs> back, back in 1989, you, you played in what a lot of people, and I certainly agree, is the best grand final of all time. And I don't think it will ever be beaten deeper. It was unbelievable. The Hawks versus Geelong, it was so brutal. High scoring, it just had everything. And at halftime, Alan Jeans gave you guys an interesting speech, which obviously inspired you onto the, the six-point victory over the Cats. What did he actually say to you, though? Because it was something that... Very, very random Pevo, from what I've been heard. So. Pevo, you're asking the wrong person, mate. Because at <laughs> half time, at half time, I was knackered. I was in the, I, I was in the toilets, just understanding, not so not understanding what was going on with me. I was like, a, my voice was like this, and thinking, what the hell's going on? My body was in, my body was imploded, and I'm thinking, what the hell's going on with me? And we find out later, I had a punctured lung, and. And uh, you know, my voice uh, was getting uh, cut off because I had no air in me. And You had broken ribs uh, as well, didn't you? The same, uh, bro- yeah. well, well, broken ribs was in that means it was punctured lung and ended up, um, but, you know, um, but the story, as I understand, is the fact that, you know, what, what does a great man like Alan Jr. who has, you know, uh, you know Dunsell, Brereton, Tuck, uh, Langford, you know, McGuinness, uh, Buckingham, uh, like, you know, all these great players. You know, you can go for Johnny Patton, of course, you know. And, and of course, he got knocked out before half time. He, he doesn't even remember the game, uh, <laughs> Plas, but, but um, he talks about this boy who, who had to go to a wedding. His mother gave him $20. He said, now, what you got to do, you got to go and buy yourself a pair of shoes. Now, he thought, you know what? It was actually $40, my apologies. You know what? He went to his shoe shop and it was a great pair of shoes, like handmade by this Italian genius and whatever. I just threw that one in, the Italian boy. But um, <laughs> but they were $40, right? But there's another pair that looked the same but wasn't made with such precision and so. He thought, and they're $20. He thought, you know what? I'll take the $20 shoes. Mum doesn't know and I'll have the $20 in my pocket. This is Jeansy saying this at half time. <laughs> In the ground, you know, under the ground of uh, where the Richmond was back in those days, yeah, the MCG. He said the young boy bought those shoes. He thought he, you know, he did the right thing. All of a sudden, the, the shoes fell apart. And one, he sat on, you know, on the footpath saying, Well, I can't go back and buy another pair of shoes, you know. And then you should have paid the price. Pay the price today and tomorrow will look after itself. Pay the price today. And then when he said pay the price, I remember the players, you know, standing up and going, let's pay the price. And, you know, who knows, I mean, who was to know the grand final was ending and so many injuries on both sides and so many players did their thing. Gary Abel's senior kicked nine goals straight and, like, it was just one of those games you, you'll, you'll, never, you'll never forget. No, I think I've watched it about ten times. It's unbelievable. Oh, so, really? Right, yeah, okay. so, so brutal. Obviously, Ablett with his nine goals, well, like you brutal, said. Yeah. Ablett, Ablett getting you, and then we saw Yatesy getting Dermy. There was just so many big hits, and yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, there's a, there was, and uh, what we felt was the fact that um, Geelong really came at us really early, not just um, football-wise, but physically. And we thought, you know, if they're trying to put, if they're trying to physically put us out with me, myself, Dermot, Jason, Michael, Tucker, the others, you know. <laughs> You're ringing the wrong bell, son, because uh, <laughs> the more you push it, the more we, uh, we, uh, we go for it. But there are three words that you don't want to hear on uh, grand final day in the middle of the MCG. And it will happen again and again, and it's happened before. And those three words are, it's yours, Dipper. Because <laughs> 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 when you stand under a ball at the MCG, because this ground MCG, Bevo, will make you or break you. doesn't matter how many times you're playing that. You always see someone who will come out a hero or someone who should have or could have or done something. You know, we always remember Jezelinko, your beauty, or we always remember, you know, Phil Manassas' run, all these great runs that we've had. And Leo Barry, and you star. <laughs> Leo Barry, I mean, Leo Barry, you star. Like, he, he flew across the pack and took that mark. Yeah. Like, the MCG will, will make you or break you, and that's, um, that's a great part of this great game of ours, you know? And a question that you, you may or may not have ever been asked before, Dipper, I'd like to know myself. Back in 1991, when you decided to to retire, what was the first day of retirement like? You know, what did you actually do? You'd sit uh, sit down and have a couple of beers, you know, reminisce on your on your career? No, no. What, what was it like? No, no. It was really strange because 
in 89, when I you know, played the game or whatever, we won the grand final. It was the first ever Hawthorne back to back. So that was a great, that was a great part of our lives, you know. We played seven grand finals in a row, right? Seven grand finals. So we didn't win back to back ever, except for 88, 89. So it was a big job for us to uh, make sure that we won that game against Geelong because, you know, 83 we won, 84, 85 we lost, 86 we won, 87 we lost, and 88, 89 first ever Hawthorne back to back. So in 1990, and so I came back because I had, uh, so in 1990, Alan Joyce uh, took over. In 91, uh, I, I was, um, I was cooked throughout the year. Remember, Platts and I, Johnny Platt and I, were in the same hospital, having the same operation and all things on our wrist. And the last six or seven weeks, I only played one senior game that year. And the last six or seven weeks of that, all I did was dedicate my body and my soul and my mind to playing the grand final. And the boys got to the grand final and uh, I, was, I wasn't picked to play in the 91 grand final. And I was really disappointed. I was really just, just... Really disappointed about our know, finals, and I was fit and was ready to go. And anyway, time moves on for all of us. And the next day, I ran. Well, actually, I rang Lee Matthews. I was really pissed off. And Lee being a great teammate of mine and captain, whatever, and he was coach of Collingwood. Uh, I rang him. I said, "I can't believe I'm, I'm not picked." I was really cheesed off. It was John Keeney and myself, Peter Swab, had missed out. And, you know what? I thought, no, I'm going to go to Collingwood. You know. So I rang up Lee. I said, Lee, go Dipper. Hello, Dipper. That's the way he talks, you know. <laughs> I said, Lee, they're not playing me in the grand final. He goes, I want to come over to Connywood. He goes, I don't want you. I said, what? No, no, I don't want you. I said, mate. No, he said, no, no, no. It's not that I don't want you. I can't promise you, you know, games and whatever. Look, at you. you're fit. You're ready to go. You've had a great career. You're a one-team player. I know you're angry at the moment, but time moves on for all of us. And, and I said, you know what, if Lee, if you don't want me, well, that's it. So I, I retired the next day after the grand final. Oh, I said wow. to my wife, I, yeah, I said to my wife, I said, okay, that is it. I'm, I'm out. And, and best, best advice I've ever had, I've become a, you know, a boundary rider and, and, and involved in football for 10 odd years and still involved in football today. So... It's amazing how sliding doors, you know? Yeah. So the day after, I was, I was, as soon as you make that decision, and the players will know this, it's just a lot of relief. There's no more training. There's no more pressures about you can't be here, you can't be seen there, you can't. But back in the 80s and 90s, yeah, we were at the pubs and you know, having a good time. There were no phones, thank Christ for that, hey? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and the boundary riding, you did a great job with Channel 7 working with the best commentators of all time, like your Rexes and Bruce, Dennis, and and who can forget Neil? G'day guys, Neil Curley on the boundary there with you as well. Well, Neil, <laughs> yeah, well, well, Neil Curley and I become uh, great friends, obviously, but uh, yeah, he's like a father figure to us when we when we joined up. And um, no, I did that for nearly uh, 12, 13 odd years. Loved it. And it was pretty, you know, with, with, working with Bruce and, and Sandy Roberts and all the guys, and uh, it was yeah, we travelled. Friday nights at the MCG, Saturday nights was either Sydney or the Gabba or Sunday the Gabba or Sydney. And they were the times when we were building the game up as well. So, you know, I've had a lot of say in it. And yeah, it's been great. And as I mentioned at the start of the show as well, you're involved with I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here last year. Yeah, yeah um, I love it. What experience is that like, mate? And uh, yeah, how'd you find all the challenges? Because some of them are absolutely crazy. Oh, the challenges are the easy part because COVID is, you know, is sort of, the first year of COVID was pretty tough because we didn't really know what, what was going on and, and we all got locked up, especially in Melbourne. We were locked up for six or seven weeks and then I ended up uh, going away and I had to uh, quarantine for a couple of weeks then go on to the show. And, and uh, no, I just loved it. I loved the challenges, loved the people. Every day, you know, you're, you're doing something different. But if you weren't doing the challenges, you're in the camp and, if you're in the camp nearly three, four, five, six, seven days in a row, well, in someone like me, you're very hyperactive, you, you're going crazy. You know? so, and they knew that and they played on that. So, But, no, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, it was terrific. Did any of the challenges scare the shit out of you? Like, just go, oh, bloody hell, that's uh, uh, Well, yeah. there, was, there was a couple of challenges where I had to eat some uh, 
spiders. So, you know, oh. that was uh, pretty cool. But the, I reckon the main one was because we had to do it. It was Grand Denyer, myself and Simon from Gogglebox. And we had to drink, we had to drink pig's blood, two fish balls, eyes, or two eyes, two fish eyes, like salmon, like salmon eyes, big ones. We had to, uh, a rat's tail. I thought there was, <laughs> and, and the three of us make sure that we had it together. So that was really good. And actually, I loved it. Yeah, we had so much fun. We had, yeah, we, we now football comes into it because, you know, you, you know, you know, we trained every day. We had great times to, you know, I had um, uh, uh, Travis there as well, talk about footy. No, I loved it. Love to do it again. And before we get too bad, I'll see which you're an ambassador for. Um, yeah, sure. Just a couple of uh, couple of quick ones. The funniest teammates that you've ever played with at the Hawks uh-huh. and why? Uh, look, I, I could go through 18 years of uh, of John Keeney Jr. He's <laughs> a rat bag. Johnny Patton's a rat bag. Dermot's a rat bag. They're all rat bags. Everyone, everyone, everybody trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, all I try to do one day well, not a one day, it was a bit of a promotion. I, I made some labels for cars, you know, dipper for skipper, <laughs> and, uh, and and I put them on all the cars. Uh, no, I didn't get one vote. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Were there any uh, <laughs> any good pranks that you could share from your days at the Hawks or? Oh, no, there's pranks. I mean, there's all different type of pranks. There's, there were players who left things in people's shoes. There were players <laughs> like, you know, I like, I just couldn't go through them all. <laughs> and your toughest opponent and why, Dipper? I get that question asked uh, a lot. Those are great times playing against a great player. I mean, playing on the wing. I went from halfback, Frank. I played on Jezelinkos and these great players. I even played on Graham Corns when he first came over and uh, Malcolm Blight. I mean, you know, what champion players they'd be. And then I went on to the wing. You know, your Mullane, Rich Jones, uh, Merv Nagels, these sort of players. So, But Dougie Hawkins would have to be, you know, not just a... a, a the hardest opponent, good mate of mine as well, but yeah, he, he could run, skip, hop and jump. But, you know, he, he was such a funny bloke to play against. We played against each other 16 times. I reckon I, he beat me 15 out of it, but I got him one preliminary final and I just <laughs> loved it, you know. <laughs> I actually interviewed Dougie last year. You're right. Like yourself, just a real character of the game and, and a fantastic yeah. bloke. Gives his time of day to anyone. So Yeah, no, yeah. no, he's... Uh, a lot of people forget how beautiful a player he was, you know. So, you know, yeah, all good. Now let's talk about Bet Odyssey, mate. Um, I'll just okay, get you Odyssey. To, I'll, go, I'll get you I'll to get in front of your, your banner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll get in front of my banner. Here we go. There you go. Anyway, Bet Odyssey. That's what TV. That's that's about TV. That's how we work. I love it. So good. Yeah, it is good. So tell us all about it, mate, and, and your involvement as the ambassador. Well, I'm ambassador of a, a, a new game changer in a tipping uh, platform. We're going to go worldwide. At the moment, we've got uh, horse racing, but we'll go into uh, you know, greyhounds and, and trust, but also basketball and AFL football. And it's um, it's not a, a betting service. It's a free service. It basically, it gives you an opportunity to stop reading the paper and going through what horses uh, or what player has been this or missed that play. Uh, um, a missed that barrier or what player hasn't played for a while. This is, it will, will give you all the stats. What you can do is just put your own criteria in. So if it's horse racing, I'll go, I love grey horses. I love the number nine, of course. I love Damien Oliver. I love this barrier. And it will come up with all the stats. So on your phone, it will just come up and just say, guess what? In your criteria, there's a horse running in, uh, in uh, Perth or Queensland. Uh, so it's, it's just an easy process, and it's free. All you've got to do is go to Bet Odyssey, uh, get the app, load it down, fill in your name and address, and it's free. And it's um, uh, it's it's not a gaming platform; it's a tipping platform. Uh, uh, platform. So, and I've got every week. If you can just see here, where are we? Where are we, Dipper? There you are. <laughs> so Dipper's lucky. Dip will give you an opportunity to uh, see what my criteria are, and you know, it's a way of picking your own winner. So. Good luck. Just and, download Bet Odyssey, cost you nothing, and we'll have a lot of fun. And outside of Bet Odyssey, mate, you still, obviously uh, you guys are in lockdown over there in Melbourne. Hopefully you'll be yeah. out very soon. What else are you doing outside of that? Well, unfortunately, with uh, with uh, you know, the entertainment world that we're all in and that sort of stuff, a lot of functions aren't, aren't happy, especially around the grand final week, and uh, which has been always uh, uh, very popular for 
a lot of the ex players and that. But no, like you know, I've got my hands in in a few businesses and uh, you know, just trying to make ends and then hopefully that um, we can get Australia opened up and get you know, to get your jab. Get you know, if you if you if you if you're a jabber or not, it doesn't really matter. But in the, the day, you know, if you've got to get those two jabs, if we can get this uh, uh, country opened up, we need it. We need it. We need to get face to face. We do, mate. We need to get crowds back at the footy again. Pack out the MCG oh, and absolutely. pack out pack out Australia and uh, and and just one final question. As a big twelfth man myself, or twelfth man fan <laughs> myself, um, the tight shorts controversy differ. Uh, you and Pats are involved in it, and your, your voice goes very, very high. And... <laughs> yeah, my voice goes high. Yeah, the twelfth man, very, very funny. I, th- I think the first time you said, uh, who, "Who's that bloke with a choco name?" So that was the one first one, and then uh, the, and, and then the way that the, the uh, you pack your lunch. Uh, so uh, he's a very, very funny man, and we miss him dearly, but. Uh, but that's entertainment, and look, if you can get, um, you know, uh, a, look, Australia at the moment, what we need is we need to get back to back. We need to get back to our friends. It's just time wasting that we're sitting at home thinking about what we're going to do. You know, Zoom meetings are all are awesome, but we all love doing things live and you know, get people entertained again. Get the footy out there. Get the kids go and play sport. You know, because. The last couple of years, kids have finished playing sport, which is just terrible because of the fact that I came through an era where sport really allowed me to be who I am today. It opens so many doors for you and uh, it teaches you a lot about your own resilience, about your own personal you know, welfare and that. So let's get Australia open, eh? Absolutely, mate. And uh, one final question my, my great producer, Rory, wants to know, what advice would you give hopeful athletes who'd love a media career like yourself? So post their career... Oh. Um, you know, what advice would yeah. you give them, you know, to go into the media, Dipper? Uh, there's nothing promised to you. Um, you know, everyone wants to be a commentator. Everyone wants to do this and that. Just be good at what you are good at, obviously, your your background. Um, and, you know, if you get the opportunities, yeah, go for it. Absolutely go for it, you know. It takes a lot of time. A lot of people work hard to get there, but you know, a lot of players get an opportunity to go and do what they do and, and, and some are good and some, you know, are so good. Love it. Great advice. Um, thanks so much to uh, the crew at Bet Odyssey for teeing up this chat. Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure, Dipper. Uh, thanks so much for your time, mate. Love all your work and uh, look forward to speaking again in the future. Now, Bevo, what does that say on your shirt? It says Legends with Bevo. So, okay, well, yeah, just, so well, I'm, I'm speaking to well, a legend well, just, today. So Yeah, well, you are. <laughs> to be a legend, you got to know a legend, and I am a legend. All right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> See you, mate. Take care.